elk shape. Uh, I was looking on the interwebs to see if I could find a video on how to use this boning multi-fletcher. Couldn't find one, had to figure it out myself, actually read instructions, so figured I would just go ahead and make a video for those that get this. This could be your quick, easy start to get to fletching, kind of go over it, give it a little bit of a review, and fletch an arrow for you guys. So let's do this. So it comes assembled out of the box. The first thing I would say is it's kind of cool for, for those that want to set up a designated area to fletch. You can screw this into the ground, or I'm sorry, or in, you can screw this into a desk or whatever. I would highly recommend that so it's not falling around everywhere. Uh, instructions wise, I think a couple things to note. Number one, it comes with this guy right here. I'm going to pop this out. So this can be soaked in acetone, this can be soaked in acetone, no problem. So you're kind of always getting rid of glue after a fletching session. I love that. Uh, you can't really soak something like this in acetone without screwing it up. At least I haven't. So uh, popping this in is super easy. This is the black. This is what I use. This is a three degree offset to the right. Uh, you can do, so it comes with a variety of options in here. You got blue, which is a two degree right feather. You got uh, this purple, it's a three degree left vein. So for those, I did left helical last year, so I, I thought about using that, but we're not, we're gonna go back to right. Uh, we have red, which is a one degree right vein. Gray, which is a straight vein, for those who like it straight on. You have a two degree left feather and you have a one degree left vein. So that's pretty cool, interchangeable, comes with that. This guy is super easy. I'll show you, so this is your arrow holder. It comes with, for smaller diameter, you would just unscrew this and swap these out. So I'm running a five millimeter, so I like that. So I'm gonna push this up to the top and tighten it. It will come at, uh, out of the box down at the bottom, just so you know. Same with this guy, you can loosen it and lower it down. And then as far as switching out a couple things in this bottom piece to note, different size knocks. So you would switch this out. Right now it's coming standard with the knock that fits my five millimeter, but if it didn't, I could just put this in and replace it. Inside here is a spring. Right now there's a three fletch in here, but check this out. You can get a 60 degree four fletch and you just have a little Allen and you can replace that in the bottom in here. You can also do the 90 degree four fletch. Again, you switch it in right here. There's a spring and there's an Allen tool. I'm not gonna show that today. I'm gonna fletch an arrow real quick. So. One thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and make sure this is all the way to the top. Tighten it down. Like so. Alright, so we're going to use an Easton match grade 340, 5 millimeter. So just knock in. The knock I'm using is a nocturnal. It's one of those strobing ones. And it's in there. The thing I like about this fletching device right out the gates is that when you turn it it snaps into place. So when you're rotating it three different times, there's no gray area. It's black or white. You either are off or you're in. We're in. Okay. We're going to be using this heat boning vein. It's two and a half inches. It's not like the, like the blazer. It's a little more stiff and it's low profile. I think it weighs about six grains. You notice I don't have a wrap. I don't do a four fletch. I don't like a lot of weight on the back end of my arrow. And all my arrows have 75 grains up front, brass insert. So three degree to the right. Um, I'll go ahead and do a little primer. I, I like the boning fletch fuse. Just the right amount of glue. I should just do a dab at both ends.
Okay, so this is the part that I like. Took me a second to figure out this piece that's pointing up. You're gonna take it, line it up, snap it down. So it'll look like this. Those two long pieces are up against here so you know you're in the right spot. It just snaps in. That's it. Super simple. Give it 30 seconds to a minute or whatever you like, your preference. Then you'll snap it off and then you'll repeat the process. I'm going to go the entire arrow without cuts just so you guys can see. I also like white veins because I like seeing what kind of blood is on my veins. So um, I think white stands out pretty good when you're hunting. This is a hunting vein and uh, I've tried pink and orange and all sorts of colors but at the end of the day if I'm going to read my arrow, my arrow is like my ultimate tool to tell me the story. I like white veins. I feel like blood shows up the best on them. And I haven't tried these two and a half inches, so I'm pretty excited. Low profile, stiffer, which means quieter, which means the arrow will get there with uh, hopefully less detection from the said animal. Okay, that's long enough in my book, so I'm going to go ahead and just snap this off. All right. I generally use a Q-tip and just any excess, which I don't see any. I used this when I first started. I'd always use way too much glue. Now I'm going to turn it to the left. You're going to hear it snap into the next spot. It's in that groove. Take this guy. There. We're going to prime it. Good. It always helps to have a lot of good light when you're trying to See how much glue you're putting on here. We're ready. Make sure that's down. I think this is a pretty cool fletch. I love that regardless, like if you're doing traditional archery or target archery, whatever you're doing, this fletch will do it. Now, I said I'll give it kind of a, a review. This is slower than what I usually do. This is a three degree to the left. This is a Max Mini left from uh, Arizona Archery. And I like the fact that I can do one arrow in one shot. So this is a faster way to fletch, but I think this is a little bit more precise, a little more precision. And so it's gonna take me a little longer, but um, should turn out pretty good. Let's go ahead and pop this one off. Any excess glue there none turn it until you hear it click there's the click here's our last vein again we're doing a three degree right prime it Snap it on. Make sure it's all the way down. And friends, you will be 30 seconds from now, we will be done with one arrow. Pretty excited about this. This will be my 2020 hunting arrow. And today we're gonna go down and get the Matthews VXR set up as well with these arrows. That's why I'm kind of making a rush order to get these done. Got a few more arrows left to go. Thoughts, opinions. It's cool. I haven't messed with interchanging. I've never been a four fletch kind of guy. I want to keep as much weight off the back end. No wraps. You do you though, man. Everybody's got their own opinion on that. That was just my personal opinion. But I will say that if you're a boning guy like me, you might want to check out these new heats. These are awesome. I think that they're going to be a little bit more conducive to bow hunting specifically. All right, we are gonna pop this off, check for any excess glue, and then we're gonna do a couple of dots on the ends of the veins. It comes out super easy. Set that aside. So generally I'll just kind of give it a quick once over. It's actually looking pretty good. There's a little extra right there. And then what we'll do Let's just do a, I like to do a little daub of glue on the ends.
let that dry and then we'll do a dot on those and then we're in business so this is what we're looking at 75 grains up front I cut my arrows I have a 27 inch draw length these arrows are like 26.75 inches with 75 brass inserted so the total arrow will be right around 430 grains that's with a broadhead and everything when I'm using full metal jackets my arrows are usually around 500 grains so that's a a little bit more speed my sight tape is a little longer and my groups can get a little bit tighter because I have a short draw length so this is what I'm doing as far as going from a full metal jacket to an axis I mean I've killed a bear an antelope an elk a mule deer all with this axis and I've had all pass throughs and the elk was shot frontal <clears throat> at 36 yards and we buried it up to the logo axis that much went in and the, the elk didn't go very far it was the best blood trail I've ever had on any elk pretty incredible okay we'll do a daub here and that arrow's done since this is the, my last arrow of a dozen, I'm gonna go ahead and put this and soak this in acetone for the next time I go. Should be pretty cool. So this is your Boney Multi-Fletch. This is your YouTube video for those that just got it and need a little help starting out. And I hope this helps. And uh, if you're into what we do here at Elk Shape, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell button to know when we drop new videos. We try to put only good stuff out. Thanks for watching. Shoot straight.